All right, let's go, everybody. Hello and welcome. Wednesday night midweek service here at Expedition Church. Welcome. Glad to have you. We're continuing in our uh, series, The Bible, in the light of our redemption with E.W. Kenyon's book. Hallelujah. We're on lesson 26 of 37, so that means we're starting to wind down. <coughs> we'll finish up early, um, early June, probably. Yep, somewhere pretty early June. And um, we'll finish this up, praise the Lord, which is, I hope you all have enjoyed it. Um, I've enjoyed it. And who knew when we started this, we would start in, in front of my fireplace and finish in our church. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. All right. And um, be safe tomorrow. It's going to be a rainy, lightning kind of day. Hallelujah. All right. So let's go into tonight's lesson, lesson 26. Make sure you share us with um, everybody on Facebook so they can join in. Hallelujah. And, um, All right, let's oh, go, everybody. Hello, and hallelujah. forgot to turn mine down. Okay. Real quick uh, um, announcement. <coughs> Next week on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. <coughs> Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday at Trailhead Church over in Graham. Uh, Pastor Hagen will be there doing a um, All Faith Crusade. What is it? Living Faith Crusade. I knew they. I knew they had changed the name. Brother Hagen used to call it All Faith Crusade. They changed it to Living Faith. Um, you know, uh, make it their own. You know, um, Dad had a reason for doing it the way he did it when he did it. So praise the Lord. But All Faith Crusade. Living Faith Crusade, Living Faith Crusade, Living Faith Crusade. They, the hard thing is all dog new tricks. All, I heard for decades, you know, all faiths. You know, you went, you went and changed it. <laughs> yeah, we went and changed the name of our church, so I'm still calling it the wrong name. But I'm on the way, hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise God. Well, what'd you say? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Technically, that's old dog do tricks, but since, you know, you messed up. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all for coming tonight. We'll see you next week. <laughs> all right. Healing. The subject of healing in the light of our redemption. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. <clears throat> this, this. Uh, it has been no small argument over this subject in, in, the, in the body of Christ. And, um, you know, there are at least three different attitudes towards divine healing among Christians. Uh, one, when we combat the, the biggest is healing is not for today. Okay. It's, it's miracles. Miracles have all passed away. Therefore, it's not for us in the church today. You know, God can, you know, and, and, in, this, and, and in this pile of, you know, it's not for us today, God can. And we've seen people healed, but it's not always his will to heal everybody. Okay. And that is your, your in, uh, in particularly in your evangelical circles, the biggest um, belief system is it's not it's either not his, always his will or it's not even for the church today okay um in that you will get the attitude god put that on you to teach you a lesson um you know you, you know um we don't understand the, the ways of the lord are past finding out you know we don't know why he put that on you or you have people say, I don't know why God allowed me to break my neck. And now I draw with my teeth. And everybody thinks I'm just this wonderful Christian. You know, y'all remember her testimony. And, uh, you know, and, and here's the thing. I am glad that they, they didn't abandon their faith in the Lord as far as salvation. Trust, you know, believing in him, loving him, you know, still serving him. But they didn't have to serve him with that mindset. Okay. And, uh, but, you know, I, I'm glad they didn't abandon the Lord. And a lot of people do because of that kind of teaching. They'll, they'll get angry and mad with God. Um, so uh, the, the sovereignty of God, you, well, you never know what the Lord's going to do. Yeah, yeah, we do. 
<laughs> okay? Um, it, but that, that mindset that God doesn't heal anymore or healing is not healing in the sense of, the, you know, the, uh, the apostles going and laying hands on the sick, uh, the miracles, uh, because we have 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 13, verses um, um, 4 through 8. And right after that, we have those I see through a glass darkly. You know, and when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away with. And, of course, the perfection was the canonicity of Scripture. That means that all the gifts and everything they talk about, you know, and, you know, and miracles or tongues or knowledge um, and all that kind of stuff have been done away with. Because we don't need them anymore. We have the canonicity of Scripture. Uh, which is probably the most demonic interpretation of that passage you could get. Okay? And I know people say, you, you say, are saying, oh, you, you're calling that demonic. Yeah, I'm calling it demonic. Because it's demon inspired. Because it blames God for a whole lot of stuff that he could fix, but he won't. Because he doesn't need to anymore because you've got the, the Bible. And can you imagine the guy sitting around a room, got all these different letters written to the church and stuff, and, you know. Um, and, of course, the other teaching is that it all passed away the day the last apostle died, which was John. We believe John lived to be the oldest, okay? So, you know, after got, John got boiled in oil on the Isle of Patmos, you know, and they couldn't do anything, so they let, had to let him go. And, uh, you know, he's going around healing folks, working miracles, signs, and wonders. And, um, you know, we're still in the age of miracles because the last apostle is still alive. And they call for John because sister so-and-so in the church is dying and they need to be raised up. And John comes walking in and they open the door. Shafts of light enter the room because the last apostle is here. And he enters the room and he's John the beloved. Carrying the last supernatural power, healing, anointing in the body of Christ because he's the last apostle. And he strolls over to sister so-and-so's bedside in preparation to lay hands on her and raise her up. And as he stands there about to lay hands on her, he goes, what? It's time, Lord. And boom, he's taken out of the body of Christ and goes home to be with Jesus. And she dies. Because the last apostle has died. And all healing signs and wonders and miracles are over with. Is that stupid or what? Oh, how about this? Um, we, we're, we're a couple, you know, we're, we're several decades or several, a couple, a few generations after John. And the other teaching is that that all passed away when the canonicity of the scripture came. So we have all the guys with all the manuscripts and they're sitting around a table and, you know, big table. And they're all arguing over what's, what's canon and what's not canon and what's, you know, is this, should this be in the Bible and should this not be in the Bible? And they're, they're making discussions, you know. And, and, of course, people are still being healed and miracles are still, still being wrought around the world. Hello? Because that which is perfect has not come. Because they don't have the canonicity yet. See, when you start putting in these kind of terms, how stupid does it sound? You know, and so they're sitting there, you know, and they got a healing revival going on over here in the next town, you know, and they're get people getting healed and crutches are being stacked up and, you know, beds, all, all this stuff's taking place. But these guys are over in a room and they say, okay, they've got, well, this one's canon, this is not canon, this is canon, this is, uh, we can't find the O2 letter to Paul to the church at Corner. They probably would be canon, but we can't find it. So we'll take these two, and that's canon, canon, canon. And um, we, okay, here's what we've got, guys. And they've got, you know, Matthew through Revelation. They're all sitting there, you know, and people, they got a healing line over the next town. People are getting healed. Somebody's going to lay hands on all the folks. And um, they all said, okay, uh, what say ye? Yay, nay, yay, 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 nay, yay, nay. And when they get done, you know, they say, okay, we have voted by, uh, by, by supermajority that this is canon. You know, and they go, bam, this is the canon. And over the next town, they're about to lay hands on somebody. And all of a sudden, whoop, stop, guys, I'm sorry. The healing power of God just left the earth. Why? I don't know why. And the next day he finds out they had the, that which is perfect. And it has come. They've accepted the canon and miracles left. Because <clears throat> that's what Paul said. Because he said that the, um, 
perfection was the scriptures. No, he did not say it. <coughs> I was being uh, facetious there. So all of a sudden, so, they, so these are the things that people say. And they sound, they do sound religious. But when people say them, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. We have canon. We don't need that anymore. We are, we're more mature. Because we don't need the miracle signs and wonders. We have the word. Yeah. And I had a woman tell me one time that, I mean, she basically was like the woman, the man born blind. Um, <clears throat> what was it? You know, the man born blind. Paul had Paul's thorn. And one other thing. And she was all wrapped up in one package. That's why she wasn't healed. No, you're not healed because you're unbelief. Okay, and so with the, the, this, this idea that miracles have ceased, when you put it in the terms of what I just put it, doesn't it sound just stupid? But if you, if you remove and don't even like look at what you're saying, and because a preacher gets up and says it, oh, the miracles passed away the day the last apostle died. There was you know, that apostolic, you know, uh, age is, was ceased to be, and there are no more miracles. Because John died. But you know what Jesus did not say? Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow the apostles. That's not what he said. He did not say they'll follow the 12 apostles of the Lamb. He said these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. <clears throat> there was the only, uh, the only parameter on the signs was that the person walking in them were believers. They wasn't limited to the apostles. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do in greater than these because I go unto the Father. But see, we have, we have such, so deified or sainthooded St. Hoodified, <laughs> the 12 apostles, of which one was a traitor and had to be replaced. Hello. Um, that nobody can do what they did because they, they were the 12 apostles. Now, let me say this. There are different classes of apostles. There were the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And no one will ever be in the class of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And that qualification was they had to go in and out with Jesus the entire ministry. Well, there's nobody else that can do that. But there were other apostles in the Scriptures. <clears throat> and we still have the office of apostles. When Paul wrote about the body of Christ, he said there are some, you know, God gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the, uh, for the edifying, for the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ, for the work of the ministry. So we know that, you know, okay, there will never be the 12 apostles of the land. Nobody gets to be one of them. But you know what? He had guys working miracles that were not one of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Hello. Okay? So it wasn't limited to them. As a matter of fact, the 70 worked miracles. Hello? The 12 worked miracles, the 70 worked miracles. Are you here? There were guys running around casting devils out in the name of Jesus. Hello? There were signs and wonders wrought in the body of Christ. Okay, so that argument is so, is so shallow, but it, you know, it shows how easily people are manipulated because somebody didn't get healed. Well, you can't be, can't be my fault. It can't, be. it can't be a lack of separating myself to the Lord or any of that. It has to be. It wasn't God's will. Or those things really don't happen anymore. I tried that once. You don't, you, don't, you don't try to do what Jesus told you to do. You do it. Amen? <clears throat> so, another group teaches that God heals today in answer to special prayer 
or a special act of faith, <clears throat> and that according to his own will in the matter. So, now, let me say, let me kind of, you know, take Kenyon's statement here. It is only by a special prayer or a special act of faith that people get healed based on whether or not God was willing to do it anyway. Okay? So th that's the group that goes, well, God, God can heal, but it's going to have to be a special, you know, just a special miracle that he just did. In other words, they disqualify the general public from it. It's only special cases, which <coughs> was only according to his will, which moves over into sovereignty. Moves over to the realm of limit, limiting it to sovereignty. We, he had a special reason. We don't know why. Why he raised so-and-so up, I just don't know. It was just sovereign. Okay? Well, that's, that has its fallacies, too. Number one, it makes God a respecter of persons. Now, I understand working of miracles and, and, and special faith and the gifts of the Spirit um, and those things. But if healing is not available to all and that only a few can get healed, that's respecter of persons. If salvation is not available to all, and only a few can get saved, you're respecting people. Now, you know, you got denominations, <clears throat> the uh, the hard shell, what they call hard shell Baptist, okay, um, act, are, are so sovereign, you can't know if you're going to get saved or not. Why do you go to church? You just never know. You, it might be that you get saved. But here's the thing. There's nothing you can do Nothing on your side of the equation can be done for you to be saved. It's already planned out by God. You're either going to be saved or not. There's nothing you can do about it. Total, absolute sovereignty. Because, you know, they, they're, they're, they're so carried over into the elect teaching. <clears throat> An election means nothing without foreknowledge. Election is based on predestination. But predestination, according to the Scriptures, is based on foreknowledge. In other words, for whom he knew, he did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son. Not he did predestine those he foreknew, or, uh, or they became his foreknowledge after he predestined them. No, for whom he foreknew, he did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son. The foreknowledge of God that you would receive Jesus calls him to predestine you to be conformed to his image. Because he saw you accept Jesus. And in that, he said, okay, they're going to, so <clears throat> how can he know everything? <laughs> God, how, how can he sit and, you know, it's like one guy said, God's the hub of a spoke wheel, and each spoke is time, past, present, and future, and he can just turn any way he wants and look and see into time. Well, how does he, how does he, uh, uh, you know, trans, uh, Get over top of the time, space time continuum. Well, Star Trek pal, I don't know. But apparently, there's wormholes in space that God goes through. Okay? And, and he walks around in different realms when he wants to. I don't understand that. I don't either. Hello? The third group teaches that healing for the body is a legal right of every child of God and that he receives healing for his physical body <coughs> upon the same grounds that he receives remission of sin for his spirit. It's just as much a right to be healed as it is to be born again. It's, it's, it's available. The ability, to be, the, the right or the access, let's just say access. The access to healing is just as available as there is access to the new birth. Same sacrifice at the same time. Now, the first attitude we talked about, you know, that healing is not for us today. Um, <coughs> he does said that God don't work miracles. Well, a miracle is a physical or material act that departs from the laws of nature or goes beyond what is known concerning, concerning those laws. 
It is really an intervention of God into the realm of the natural laws or the realm of human activity. It is God coming upon the scene. When God comes into immediate contact with men, a miracle is performed. Every answer to prayer, regardless of its size, and every new birth is a miracle. An act of healing whereby God comes into immediate contact with man's physical body is no more a miracle or no less a miracle than the new birth in which God has come in contact with the spirit of man imparting to him his own nature. Man can ask God to perform a greater miracle than healing, which is to be born again, when he asks him to save, it, to, to save him. <coughs> and, a great, and as great as healing is, when he asks to answer a request, regardless of how slight it, um, and as a great miracle, as great a miracle as healing, when he asks him to answer a request regarding how slight it might be. So if God will answer the prayer to save you, he'll answer the prayer to heal you. To say miracles only uh, belong to the apostles or the apostolic age would be to say that God must take place as a spectator in the world that he created from the end of the apostolic age until now. Okay? Now, Kenyon says this. We can see how, how utterly false this teaching is. Okay? Let us seek to find what God's word declares about the issue. Of the other two beliefs, he, he just like just throws this one out the front door and says, ain't no need in dealing with it, it's stupid. If the second attitude is correct teaching, the third is not. In other words, if you can only be healed by a special miracle, then God's healing power is not available to everybody. Oh, however, on the other hand, <coughs> if healing is a part of God's man's redemption in Christ, healing belongs to every child of God. And no special act of faith is required. Now, let me say, there are special acts of faith that get it. But no special act of faith is required. Does that make sense? See, we have the gift of special faith. We have gifts of healings. We have miracles that take place as, and they're during the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. But that is not required to get healed. It's, it's something that God does do. And, and there, there are manifestations of the Spirit where he can just moves supernaturally. But it is not required the way you get healed. Now, Benny Hinn, a number of years ago, uh, was doing a meeting in Atlanta. And, um, and that most, well, all of y'all know the Durants. Y'all have all been here when Kevin and Durant came to the church, right? Penny, you were here because they came to, they came to the community center. Okay? Now, Kevin and Ann used to be with Raymond Singers, a band. We were one of the first churches they went to when they came out of the Singers and went on the road. And um, uh, they were at a Benny Hinn meeting. They were down in Atlanta. Benny was doing a big, uh, down in that, the, the, um, not, I think the old Omni, the old Omni down there. And uh, that was full. And um, <laughs> service starts, and they do all their worship, and, and uh, no Benny. <clears throat> and then finally, after a while, because they just, you know, <clears throat> finally got on the thing and said, well, Brother Hen, to start, if you've ever been in Atlanta, you can understand this. The loop around Atlanta is also known as the world's biggest parking lot. Now, depending on what time of day you hit the belt line in Atlanta, the speed the speed averages 120 all the way down to zero. <clears throat> okay? We were on it one time, got stuck on the left lane and couldn't get out, and I'm doing 110 in the minivan, and they're right up your butt. I mean... You're like, I, I can't do this. And they're just right up under you. Well, you can't slam on brakes. They, they, you know, they, you have a major accident if you tried to slam on brakes to get them off your butt. I needed a little light switch I could flip, make it look like my brake lights came on. <laughs> flash, flash, you know, like the truckers do. And um, anyway, they said, he's stuck out on the belt line. We don't know when he's going to get here. He can't get here right now. He's on the way. So they, you know, they're all there. They all came from miracles. Now, he has a miracle ministry, just like a lot of people have had a miracle ministry in the past. And um, they, said that, they said, you know, well, they said that for a lot of people, somebody started singing some, you know, charismatic chorus. And it started going around the building. Everybody started singing, you know, and, you know, this is the day. You got to do charismatic now. Okay, we got to go to the right era. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. 
I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. One more time. Oh, oh this. <laughs> Remember those? Yeah. I love those things. Yeah, they were great. Hallelujah. Uh, I, remember when, I remember when I'm at Pentecostal church, they started singing charismatic courses on Wednesday night. You thought, my gosh, we're not in the fourth stanza of whatever after skipping the second and third. You'd seen the first and the fourth usually. You didn't see the middle two, rarely. <clears throat> And they said they kept doing another and said they tried another one, you know, that kind of stuff. And all of a sudden, they said somebody jumped up and that crowd screamed, I'm healed. And then somebody popped up over there, popped up over here, and popped up. And all around the building, and people started jumping up, screaming that they had been, just been healed. And Benny Hinn's not even in the building yet. They just got over to a place of, of, of being in the presence of the Lord. And, you know, and they had come to get healed. And they got over in his presence and started getting healed. <clears throat> didn't have to have a special miracle. Didn't have to have a special prayer. Now, I am not saying that those special prayers or people operating in gifts of healings or working of miracles are wrong. What I'm saying is it's not required. <clears throat> and that's what some people teach, that it's required. You have to have that or you can't get it. Which is just not true. Now, thank God for the manifestations of the Spirit. We, we rejoice with people who get healed, whether on their own faith or they were in a meeting and their special miracle or the signs and wonders were in manifestation. Praise God. But the, 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 the thing is that it's not required to get it that way, and it's the only way. I like, I like what uh, Andy used to say. <clears throat> you know, Brother Hagen would, you know, uh, get ready to start praying for the people, and she'd say, now, there is more way, one way to be healed. She, then she goes, one way, not the only way, but one way is through the laying on of hands. And so when hands are laid on you, you know, which is one way, it's not the only way, but it's one way that you can receive healing. Just release your faith and receive the power of God and you'll be made whole. Then Brother Hagin will start laying hands on the sick. Now, but she always said, one way, but not the only way. See, if we limit it to only a special miracle or a special prayer or, you know, weeks of fasting and, you know, all of a sudden every time somebody gets sick, we've got to fast for six weeks to get them healed. Uh, but that, and if, they, if you fast five days, five weeks and six days, they don't get it. Okay? Some people don't have five weeks and six days. Are you here? Y'all go home. Um, now, if on the other hand, healing was a part of man's redemption in Christ, healing belongs to every child of God. And that's what we're after. No special act of faith is required to obtain it. Again, it's not that people, that there aren't special acts of faith. It's not that there aren't miracles and working of miracles or gifts of healings manifest when people get healed. It's not the requirement. It's one of the ways that God does heal. Okay? Now, we've gone over this before. <clears throat> in, in um, teaching, and I don't know that we'll get done with this tonight, although I know we won't get done with this tonight. The Bible, the Gospels, you know the Gospels. Um, y'all do know what the Gospels are, right? <laughs> y'all should. I know y'all do. Okay. In the Gospels, we have 30, I believe 30, um, 31 or 32 Miracles, miracles, healings. If you add them all up, go through each book and count each book. Between the four books, there are, I think, 31. Okay. I believe 31. <clears throat> um, miracles recorded. Healing miracles, other miracles. Of the 31, <coughs> 19 are different. Meaning this, that through the Synoptic Gospels or John's Gospel, they record the same healing or miracle in those books. It's not a different healing. It's the same one, although recorded three times or maybe in some cases four times. It's still just one. Okay. So we have recorded in the Gospels 19 different 
healings or miracles. Now, the interesting thing is of the 19, 12 of them, Jesus directly states that their faith did it. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go thy way and be it unto thee even as thou wilt. Great is thy faith. So that means of the 12, seven were, uh, were not credited with the person's faith being the reason. So what we got? Well, 12 and 9, you know, I don't know what the percentage of that is. Maybe 60%, 65% of healings, according to just, just based on that, would be because of the person's faith. However, there's another 35, 40% that got healed through, it, through a manifestation of God. Hello? A, a, a special prayer or a miracle. So God didn't limit it. But with those other 65% did not get healed because it was a special whatever in operation. They got it because they, they had faith. So it was available to them even though there wasn't a manifestation in operation. Faith got it. I said faith got it. Faith says what God says. Little David, hallelujah. <coughs> Amen. So think about that now, that, you know, uh, a larger percentage of people healed under the ministry of Jesus were healed because of their faith. However, there were people who were healed by a miracle of him, him working some type of miracle, doing something, you know, in, in a special supernatural manner that got them healed. So what, what are we trying to say? The special miracles are, you know, people, well, Jesus healed to prove he was the Son of God. Twelve of them got healed because they had faith. He didn't say anything about proving he was the Son of God. Are you here? They got healed because they had faith. They received because they had faith. The others got healed because of some special miracle or whatever. So here we go. Special miracles or special prayers or, or, or actions of the supernatural do take place and people do get healed. However, it's not a requirement, and in most cases, it's not even an operation. Most people to be healed by their own faith. Now, you understand faith that God gave them. God gave to every man the measure of faith. And it's built by faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Okay? Uh, to, in our circles, that's kind of a, you know, a known. <laughs> However, for people who haven't ever heard before, <clears throat> um, the faith that you have was given by God. It's developed through the word. You act on it and you receive. Okay? It's available to all of you, all of us, because it's part of the plan of redemption. Now, it's available to all of us through the plan of redemption by receiving by faith. But if you would get it by, I'm going to be honest with you. If somebody came in and had working in miracles and said, Ed, you know, you got this, this, this. Come on up here and lay their hands on me and I got instantly healed. I would not go back there and say, I didn't get it by my own faith. I don't want it. I would not do that. I mean, you talk about dumber than a brick. <laughs> now, listen, here, here's what we got into sometimes in our circles. We got people so trained in not making a negative confession that, um, and they're believing God, and God sends the delivery team to deliver it, and they wouldn't take it. A number of years ago, I was in the church, and a lady was sitting uh, right basically where Penny is. And I had a word of knowledge. Okay? No, it wasn't, I'm sorry, it wasn't me. It was, it was Joe Morris. Joe Morris had a word of knowledge. That somebody had a certain problem. Got a certain problem. I was fixing that with no story. That was, Joe, that was Joe that night. And, and he, he, he walks right up to the woman. Because he's calling out and stood there for five minutes and nobody's responded. He said, no, the, uh, the Lord shows me you're dealing with such and such. Huh? He said, okay. He goes there and calls out a few other things, you know. People come up, lays hands on them, they get healed. He stands there and said, man, are you sure? Because you don't have such and such. Nope. Okay. And finally, after about 10 minutes of that, he just gets bold. God shows me you've got such and such. And she finally said, well, 
I, I believe that I received my healing. And you're sitting there going, stupid. Here's the package. <laughs> it's been delivered. Here it is. She wouldn't say it was her because she thought that was unbelief. Faith foolishness? Yeah, that's exactly right. It's not presumption. It's foolishness. Because they've heard, you know, well, once you say that you received it, you can't say anything else. But here is, it's like ordering something from Amazon, and the guy at the front door opens, rings the doorbell and says, um, uh, I have a package for so-and-so. It's such and such. That's not mine. Well, did you order? Yep, I've received it. The moment I paid for it, I received it in Jesus' name. Well, lady, here it is. Nope, that's not mine. I received it already. When did you receive it? When I ordered it. I know, and here it is. No, it's not mine. For me to say that's mine is to be unbelief about, about me paying for it when I ordered it. Finally got her to, well, ma'am, and laid hands on her. You know, she, she was so messed up in her thinking, she thought for him to call it out and then for her to lay hands on her was an act of unbelief on her part. That's all you can say, Jerry. <laughs> uh, or you can give the church finger and just walk right out the back door. Because these people are messed up. But see, that, that's how, that comes from bad teaching. There does have, the train does go by on the tracks. Is that the first time during the service? Wow. We've actually had a train come by while we were having church. I didn't know they actually did that. Somebody asked me the other day, does the train actually run on those tracks? I guess it does. I hadn't seen it. Well, praise the Lord. We heard it now. So, <clears throat> we have to change our service times. So we don't coincide with the train. I'm messing, y'all. I'm messing. So, and I, don't want, I, don't, I guess I don't want to overly, you mind if I use your stool, Dick? Overly, um, you know, ride that point. But healing belongs to all of us in the plan of redemption. <clears throat> it is a provision of the covenant we have with God to be healed in our body. Every believer has access to it. Now, there are reasons people don't get healed. Sometimes it's pure, absolute, rotten unforgiveness. Sin, okay? I mean, there are reasons people don't get healed. But it has nothing to do with it was not available. Okay? And we can rectify the other. I mean, you know, uh, Dad talks about the woman that came, used to come to healing school. Been coming for a while. And one day, instead of teaching on healing, he taught on forgiveness. And right in the middle of his sermon, this woman gets up and runs out the back door and ran across the street from Raymond. And at that time, there was a building over there. Now, it's, it's owned by student housing. I think they actually tore that building down. It was the old Monterey house, Mexican restaurant. Tex-Mex restaurant, more Mexican. Hot. Well, this woman had, had an operation, and they accidentally slit her esophagus. She couldn't eat solid food. Hadn't for um, like three years. And not eating solid food. And uh, she went over there because it was a pay phone. This was before cell phones. And uh, picked up the, uh, the, the pay phone and called her brother. And he got on the phone. She said, oh, so-and-so, this is, this is, this is, whatever her name was. She said, I got to ask you to forgive me. He said, oh, sis, I don't have to, I need for you to forgive me. And they couldn't even remember why they were mad at each other. Hadn't talked in 15 years. And couldn't even, didn't even know why they couldn't, had been mad at each other. And while she's talking on the phone, she gets healed. Well, service is about over, so she decided to go get something to eat. Went in and ate three Mexican meals, and all she'd had was liquid food for three years. Didn't bother her a bit. 
<clears throat> Amen. Which is yeah, a miracle in itself, even if you hadn't had a split, split esophagus. If you hadn't eaten Mexican food out in Tulsa, it's. Whew. You walk around singing, you light up my life as the flames come out. <laughs> All right. So where does sickness come from? So, so now here, here's our three things. One miracle has passed away. doesn't happen anymore. It's foolish. One, you have to have a special miracle or a special prayer in order to get it. Limitation of respect to persons, or it's available to everybody in the plan of redemption. Can be a miracle, can be a special prayer, but it's still available even without those. Okay? Which is the one that's accurate. Where did sickness and disease come from? I mean, in order for you to blame God for putting it on you. And here's my thing. I always want to ask people who tell me God did it for a reason, and I always want to ask them, what was the reason? Well, I don't know. Oh, don't, don't even go there yet. I, you, that's my punchline. <laughs> what did you learn? What, what was the reason he wanted to put, you know, uh, cancer on you? I don't know. Well, I, I, you know, he's working about, he, he's got a reason. Then why are you going to the doctor to get rid of it? Well, that's part of the process. No, 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 no. If, he, if sickness is a blessing from the Lord to teach you a lesson, that God's trying to work something out on you, you should be praying for a double portion. Because then you'll get to the lesson quicker. And if you don't learn it, you just go ahead and die quicker. Amen. Think about it now. It's the will of God I'm sick, and you go into the doctor to get rid of the will of God. Uh-huh. Busted. All right. As a result of Adam's high treason, spiritual death gained entrance into the spirit of man. And in his reign in the, in the human race, and has been the soil out of which reigned sin, disease, and death over man. Sickness and disease and, deaths and death in man's physical body are but the manifestation of spiritual death within his spirit. The outward man is a reflection of the inward man. Hello? Now, I get told this all the time. People find out how old I am. Well, I would have never guessed you was that age. I'm 63, and I know y'all, almost y'all are older here. But okay, I would have never guessed. I would have said you were in your 40, late 40s, maybe 50. No, I'm 63. But what? Why? The life of God. Now I got relatives who are younger than me who look 20 years older than me. Why? Because they was rode hard and put up wet. Way too many times. That's an old a horse saying, you know, ride the horse out, get it wet, sweaty, and bring it in, don't brush it down and stuff. It gets all mangled up and d dingy and all that, you know. Yeah, rode hard and put up wet. And younger. And look 15, 15, 20 years older. And you're like, how can you look that much older than me? you younger than me. Well, the life of God. It's that my body is reflecting the outward work of the inward spirit or an outward manifestation of the inward man, that, that born-again man where the life of God is. Amen? It renews. It's a renewing power. Amen? Doesn't mean we're not going to age. Doesn't mean you're not going to age. Don't mean you're not going to die. Hello? But you don't have to look like You've been run over by a tractor trailer and parked for six years while you're doing it. Amen? I mean, look, Dick's 70 and plays tennis. 72. He's 72 and playing tennis. Hello? They, was it 50 years you've been married? Okay. They've been married 10 years longer than me and Janie. They don't look they, 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 that, that old. I'm only older than dirt. 
but they don't look it. Look like fine, filtered, top grade topsoil. <laughs> I'm messing with y'all. Hallelujah. Hey, it's better. I, I called uh, uh, Penny a bozo a few weeks ago, so. My wife so honey, honey, do you think you offended her? No, she laughed about it. Honey, are you sure she didn't offend her? And I really didn't call her a bozo. I just said, I drove up and wondered what bozo drove across here. <laughs> and it was Penny. Yeah. Very easy to have done, if you've, especially if you've never been out here much. <laughs> Isn't it good we can have fun in the, in the kingdom together? Now, don't come up here and slap me because I said something. You're not Will Smith, all right? Now, listen to this. If man had never died spiritually, sickness, disease, nor death would have ever entered in to the kingdom of man. It was when Satan became the god of this world, and, the, 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 and part of the results of his reign was the um, populate, populating of air with disease germs, so that from then to the present time, miracles, uh, di disease microbes are floating around. They get into people. They, they pervert um, the, the physical body. Sin is the result of spiritual death. Sickness in, in the spirit. Sickness is the result of spiritual death in the body. And ultimately dying physically is the result of spiritual death. Now I heard somebody say one time, well if you ain't, can't get sick, how are you going to die? Like they did in the Old Testament. I'm going home today. Kids, come. You're cursed. You've been a jerk. You're blessed. Uh, I'm going to kind of semi-bless you. You're, 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 you're out of the everything. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're cursed. Bye. Boom. Wigglesworth kind of died that way. Went up and had breakfast and sat down with the family and said, um, I'm going home today. They thought Grandpa had gone and got senile. He's at home. Ate breakfast, went down the hall, sat in his chair, and went home to be with Jesus. Brother Summerall's last sermon, he said the C-130 cargo planes paid for, the Evangeline, the cargo ships paid for, uh, the ministries operating in the black. I'll see y'all on the other side. And Ten days later, he was in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. The fact cannot be denied that in this world there's evil. Evil has caused many earnest people to reject the, in the belief of God of love. They've not understood that evil was the result of Satan's reign over humanity as the prince and God of this world, which Adam gave him. Philosophers who've been impressed by the, uh, by the reign of evil, that they've arrived at the conclusion that the central principle of the universe is evil. They're wrong. It is not the creator, but the usurper who is the source of evil. The divisions of evil are pain and sin. Pain may have several subdivisions, but the major body of pain known and experienced by humanity is the pain caused by disease. Go, I mean, you know, when Janie was going through, um, what she went through, you go to Duke, you go to the, the, the uh, cancer center, and there are people driving up the whole time you're there. One right after the other going in. One right after the other going in. One right after the other going in. I mean, people, and that's just Duke. You got to right, right around the 15 miles away is UNC Hospitals, and they've got a cancer center, and that's going on over there. Then you go over to Wake Forest Medical, and it's going on over there. Humanity is plagued by sin, by sickness, because of the fall of man. And we're doing, they're doing everything they can to fight it, and Satan just keeps creating new ones. Hello? Or moving on men and making them evil and having them create new ones for him. Corona. Yeah, don't let the corona get on you. <laughs> Shannon's trying not to act like it bugs her. But it's going to be in her head the rest of the night. She'll lay down at night to go to bed and she'll think, you got to do the best you can. Make sure you wash your hands. Don't let the corona get... There was a song came out right when Corona came out. 
by Deacon Otis Wicknine. Now look up Deacon Otis Wicknine and listen. Don't let the corona get on you. You'll, you'll enjoy it. It's a parody song, by the way. But it was, I've, I've called her up on her cell phone and said, hey, Shannon, how you doing, honey? Don't let the corona, and daddy! I sent her a voice text the other day doing that. <laughs> she had no idea it was coming until it was too late. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I love to aggravate. Hallelujah. And they love it. They love their daddy. Sin and disease are twins born of spiritual death. One is of the spirit, one is of the body. Sin is a disease of the spirit, sickness as we see it, of the physical body. God looks upon disease the same way he looks upon sin. It is the work of Satan in the life of his creation, man. One in the spirit, one in the flesh. And we know it was as, as important to God to deal with sickness and disease as it was to sin because he used the same sacrifice to deal with it. At the same time. Hallelujah. God isn't like, well, it's just your spirit's important, you know, your body, oh, well, you know. He created that body as a perfect home for the spirit of man. That was his plan. Christ came to reveal the Father God to make known his attitude toward man. By carefully following the life of Christ, we learn that the attitude, we learn about the attitude of the Father towards sickness. Now listen, that's all we're going to get to tonight. Wow. I didn't know I had five, four, more, four more pages um, to cover. We won't get to that tonight. How many give you 30 minutes? Your three hands go up. I got an hour and a half. I might get it done. So, um, if the origin of sickness and disease is Satan as a result of the fall and not as some would purport, a blessing of the Lord uses a tool to teach us a lesson. One preacher here in town was on television one time, said that Satan was God's puppy dog that he sicks on you. Now, this was a charismatic church. Ought to have known better. They would also preach, you know, this might be your day to get saved. Come on down. You never know what God's going to do. Now, now I, I, how can you get anybody to come in faith because you never know what God's going to do? How, how do you know? You, how, how can anybody come and say, you know, no, you teach them. Don't harden your heart as it did in the provocation. Today is the day of salvation. If you'll harden not your heart. Amen. When's the day of salvation? Today. Not, you never know, this just might be your day. Changing the phraseology either produces faith or, or, or robs faith. And by saying God's doing it, and we honest with you, it's difficult, it's extremely difficult to be able to get people in faith about receiving healing when you're telling them God put it on them. Because then... As they said in the scripture, remember they were arguing, they said, uh, when, when they came up, when they, were, they were trying to deal with the apostles, and they said, men, we need to watch out what we're doing. We could find ourselves fighting against God. If you believe God put it on you, and then you're trying to get rid of it, you're fighting against God. You're trying to get out of the will of God. Why? Because you don't like it. It's bad. It hurts. It doesn't make sense. You're doing everything you can to get rid of the plan of God because it doesn't seem right. And you just don't know why he would do that to you. And then the people left behind wonder why did God kill their, their loved one like that. They served him faithfully. Y'all hear you gone home. Amen. And so we have, to, we have to be careful to stay with the scriptures, to stay with who God is and what God desires for his people. Amen. So they can walk in the lights. He's in the light and receive the blessings of God. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Next week we'll get into um, Christ being the will of the Father, uh, going actually into healing, being in redemption and so forth, and we'll finish up. Well, we might not finish up. Hallelujah. So we might not finish up early June. This one lesson can take us into late June just by, you know, adding a few extra weeks in here. Okay? Um, again, please mark on your calendars. Next Mon Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, uh, Pastor Hagen over at uh, Trailhead Church in Graham. Um, and that's the name of the church, Trailhead. So you could, um, you could put that into your GPS and find it. Praise the Lord. Go to Trailhead Church. And we're, I'm going to be there. I'm going to try to be there all three nights. Um, we love the Hagens. We love to support them. We want them to know that we're with them. And, um, you know, and I get to say hello to them. Um, praise the Lord. All right. This is time to receive our offering. If you're out there in uh, offering land, hallelujah, you can go ahead by uh, cash app uh, and send your offering in. Praise the Lord. Um, and those here, if you need an offering envelope, grab it off the seat back in front of you. And uh, Brother Joe will collect it here in just a minute. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the tithe and the offering. We thank you heaven's windows are open unto us, and you empty out blessings. We don't have room enough to receive. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. Praise God, amen. Glory to God. Go ahead and receive that, Brother Joe. The rest of you, um, be blessed and say Jesus is Lord and God is good. Amen. All right. Remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. See you next time here at the, at the church where we live in the life of victory, forged by faith here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Good night. We love you. And see you next time.